Deputy Catherine Connolly, please. Permil Magadhi Kian Corla and um, Tishuk. That's what the report looks like, and I'm going to hold that up to show the survivors because they don't have it. And that is um, the executive summary with the recommendations and one or two odd. And not a single survivor has that. I have it since yesterday when it was put in the pigeonholes of TDs. I'm not sure did the media collude with the government or was it just pure ignorance on their part, but on every bulletin they, pass, they said that the report would be made available to the survivors prior to us getting it. That hasn't happened. I see two female ministers here today and I would dearly love you to address this. No report was ever given to the survivors. They were invited to a webinar where were they were told the government's version and then they were invited to download 3,000 pages. Now that's that. You have the report since October. There was urgency to the legislation that went through the doll you told us and you forced the legislation through and that report has set with you since then. And the three wise men run in the country, I might in, in, in a, a worse moment maybe refer to the three unwise men, decided to hold on to that report and still not give it to the survivors and stand up here today with sweet words and tell us you're apologising. I welcome your apology, Taoiseach, but let me place it in perspective. In 21 years, I'm going to deal with very quickly. 1999, we had an apology from Bertie Ahern in relation to the treatment of over 15 to 20,000 children in industrial schools, reformatory schools, and what were called orphanages. That apology and I'm only picking some of the reports in that 21 years, followed by the Ferns Report 2005, the Rhine Report 2009, which found that sexual abuse was endemic in the boys' industrial and reformatory schools, and both girls and boys suffered from emotional abuse on a big scale. 2009, we had the Murphy Report. 2011, we had the Klein Report. 2013, we had the Magdalene Report. Uh, an interdepartmental committee followed by Mr Justice Quirk in relation to uh, the establishment of an ex gracia scheme, subsequently found by the Ombudsman to be a maladministration, maladministration of this thing. Then we set up Karanua, an appalling name for anything to say it was a new friend when really it was the old enemy in disguise. So we put the old enemy under the word Karanua. Followed in 2017 by a technical report on the tune side, nothing has happened since. And then I want to pay tribute to a number of people. Mike Mallott, who published a book way back in 97 called Banished Babies and republished in 2012. RTE for their documentaries, Mary Raftery, um, Patricia Burke Rogan, and also Conal O'Farrta. And then, leading into this, we have Catherine Corliss's discovery by painstaking work, paid for it herself, and discovered that there were 798 bodies. And what was the response of the Bon Secure sisters at the time? Through Terry Prone, their PRO, not a single bone will be found. Not a single child will be found. I, I am a longer press release from them. And so this report today has come almost six years after the commission was established by Fine Gael and I think a Labour government, February 15. And we have waited and we've gone through seven interim reports, most of which were published belatedly. The sixth interim report wasn't published at all, the one that dealt with the database, and it was published yesterday. And I thank you for that. You've given no explanation as to why it wasn't published at the time it came out. It refers to something, a document in relation to Bessborough, which wasn't there and wasn't included. I look at this report and I, I, I struggle for words, but I owe that to the survivors to find words to articulate because you are actually placing abuse on abuse in the manner in which this whole subject has been dealt with. If you're changing from today with a fulsome apology, I welcome that, and with quick action in relation to a compensation scheme and proper supports. I doubt that, but I will work with you. I will support you if that's 
but forgive me for my lack of trust. It's based on personal experience, family experience, professional experience, and indeed haven't taken the trouble to read every one of the reports that I've referred to and more besides. So my trust is really stretched, but that's just me as a TD. Where does that leave the survivors who were sitting on a webinar yesterday? While your language and the language of the media told them that they had the reports when they didn't have the reports. And the language of the patriarch and the three unwise men continues to tell women what's good for them, and men indeed who spend time in our homes. And I'm looking at this, and I will not pay tribute, actually, I'll pay tribute to the survivors who came forward. I think Deputy Kelly referred to a thousand. I know it's been difficult for all of us to come to terms so quickly, but there wasn't a thousand. Over, just over 500 came forward to the Confidential Committee and they told their story. And when you look at those and listen to the... And my experience is that people who spend time in institutions rarely talk about it. Lifetime goes by and they don't talk about it. Intergenerational uh, consequences for years and years. So when they went forward to this, they went forward in trust to tell their story. And the story jumps off the pages. The role of the church, the role of the priest, the role of the county council. Indeed, Galway, Tune distinguishes itself by being one of the worst homes in the country, with the active, not the active involvement, under the control of the county council, under the control of the county manager, who took a very active role. And actually, they had a policy that if the woman got pregnant a second time, then she was destined for the Magdalene Laundry, not for the mother and baby home. Can you imagine that, Taoiseach? Just listen to that, the county manager actively involved. And then we look at this report. And while they tell the story, the women, of rape, sexual assault, nearly 12% under 18, as young as 12, in these homes, and this commission finds that there was no evidence that they were forced by the church or by the state. Now, to me, it's incomprehensible to draw that conclusion and many other conclusions which I have a great difficulty with based on what's given by the women when they tell their stories. Because the priest jumps off the page, the solicitors jump off the page, GPs jump off the page who phoned the doctors, uh, who phoned the um, priests. And some of the sexual abuse carried out by family members, by cousins, by uncles, and by priests. All of it set out here. And then we have conclusions from this commission that tell us that, there's no, that there was no evidence of compulsion. Now, either we believe the women or we don't. If we don't believe them, we're adding utter hurt to what they always feared that they wouldn't be believed. So I'm using my few minutes here to say I absolutely believe the survivors who have come forward, although their memories are very, very difficult. And yet we have a commission that tells us, no, there is no evidence. And there is no evidence also of forced adoptions. When all of the evidence given confirms this, now, I would have liked if you dealt with that today in a little bit more nuanced manner than you've done so, uh, Taoiseach. I don't expect you to have read it all because none of us could in the time allowed. But really, the inconsistencies in this report are nothing short of shocking. The writing is unprofessional and amateurish in parts. There is inconsistency in relation to how people are referred to. Sometimes they're called people. Sometimes they're called a witness. Sometimes they're called another witness. Sometimes they're called a woman. Sometimes they're called a survivor. Absolutely no consistency. And then a narrative that seeks to balance if something bad was said, but now we'll finish on a positive note. I find the whole thing actually repulsive to tell you the truth, the narrative. What I don't find repulsive at all are the stories of the women, which I have read and which I was familiar with. But the spin continues in relation to the way this report was done. And that spin came from the Taoiseach back in 2017. And you are continuing with that spin today, where the Taoiseach said, the nuns and the priests didn't come in the middle of the night and take our children. Yes, they did on some occasions, but not often, because it was far more subtle and controlled than that. And the powers that were was the church with the 
politicians playing a subservient role. And if we go to the County Council in Galway, and I'm using it as an example because it jumps off the pages, they had their meetings in that home. They actually had their meetings in that home. The absence of records, the appalling mortality rate, it was known at the time. And you're saying here today that we're all responsible. I am not responsible. My family was not responsible. The people I know were not responsible. And those least responsible were those put into the homes. So don't stand here today and expect me to listen to you with patience when you tell us society did that. Society did it. The society composed of the powerful against the powerless. And on top of that, the old distinction, public and private medicine, same thing here. If you had the money to pay and you came from a more middle class family, you were treated differently. You paid your way and you didn't spend as long in there. Children in tune, girls stayed up to seven years, boys up to five and six. What is completely absent from this report amongst many other gaps is a failure to acknowledge the importance of bonding and when the bonding is broken, the implications of that for human interaction. There's a complete dismissal of children being taken from mothers and, and an acceptance that adoption was much better. There are statements to that effect in here that they were better adopted than in nursing homes, in mother and baby homes. I could go on. I know there was a little bit more leniency today. I won't, I won't dwell on take that leniency. I have enough said for today. I certainly find the narrative disturbing. I accept your apology. I'd like to see it with meaningful action. Quick redress. Learn from the debacle of the Magdalene Redress Scheme and of Karenua. Stop making distinctions between children who were accompanied by mothers and children who weren't. Let's, let's accept that this was an inhuman, unacceptable system. And in fact, I'll finish by saying the one time that inhuman is used in this report, strangely enough, Ken Corla, is in relation to England, which took our mothers and their children if they were lucky enough to have them. And the only time that the word inhuman is used is in relation to the Catholic charities in England who sent the mothers back to Ireland. Imagine they were repatriated. Do you know what that means? Generally it means returned. Here it was forced back to Ireland. And inhuman is used simply on that occasion and at no other stage during that report. I hope this is the start, I hope, of a truly meaningful debate and action where language means something and where you actually listen to the people on the ground and never, ever repeat a webinar or the leaking of a report so that you can control the narrative. Simply disgraceful. Thank you, Deputy Connolly. Now that concludes.